Hello my friends, Eunice Adubango here in my space. Oh, we have had beautiful months, many beautiful weeks where I have brought in my friends. I have so many friends. I'm going to bring into you so many friends, so many mentees, so many children, so many colleagues. I am going to keep on bringing many and many and many, and we are going to have amazing conversations in this space. So there was a time I brought us Pastor Samuel. We had about two conversations with him. And then I came in with Derek to see me. We had about two conversations with him. And today I have brought you my brother Patrick people call you Arjuna I like to call you Arjuna how do they pronounce the name again Arjuna Arjuna, Arjuna. okay <laughs> Well, I don't know why I'm getting only friends like that to see me over now Rukundo over now Arjuna I don't know what God is saying. You know, locally, twagalo okulaba buli muchimumu kama chagamba. Kaina chagamba. Maybe God is saying something. We love to see what God is saying. But I'm very happy to host my friend Patrick. And he's going to introduce himself to us. And today we are going to have story time. We are going to talk about <laughs> you know that movie The Rise and Fall of Idi Amin. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about the rise and fall, the fall and rise of Patrick Ajuna in business. So call all your business friends. Some of them are probably somewhere crying. You know, some of them have covered themselves in brackets and they're like, I will never do this. This is very bad. They are just about to watch a guy go and crash so badly. And yet he's here today. And he's still on the rise. He's not yet where he wants to be, but hey, he has come here today to encourage us, to tell us his story, but to also tell us some advice on some of the things that we got to do. Patrick, you're welcome. Thank you. Mm. You know, I told you I have plans for you. <laughs> so this is the first of many times you are going to be in this space. Welcome to this space. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you Look into the camera and talk to these people and tell them who are you, why are you, where are you, what are you, who's are you, beyond all of them. Ah. Over to you, Patrick. Thank you so much. I am really, really glad to be here. It's mm. really very good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm. And uh, I thank God so much for this opportunity mm. to be here, to be hosted by Eunice and Dupango. Mm -hmm. I am Ajuna Patrick. Mm -hmm. I am a married man. Mm. I have three sons. Mm. Hey, three sons, I Patrick. Three sons. I thought you had co a daughter. No, I don't have. You're really trying yet. to be like me, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. A, I have. Uh, have three sons. Mm. Their mother actually is the only girl in the house. Mm. Like me. Sure. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Mm. I'm um, a businessman. Mm -hmm. I've been in business for some time. Mm. I have started. I walked a little, mm -hmm. fallen, and then mm -hmm. gotten up again. Mm -hmm. Fallen again. Uh, fallen again, mm -hmm. gotten up again. Mm. I am up again. Amen. There's so many struggles, mm -hmm. but I am up. You're like Paul. He said, pressed down, but mm -hmm. not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> he said every yeah, day we bear in our bodies the mark of this cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you are really pressed, but you're not abandoned. I love this song we sing at church very much. Uh, these days I like, I, these days I think I got a new revelation about it. And mm -hmm. I thought about that song. That's why I thought about Paul saying, I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. Mm -hmm. I'm pressed down. I'm crushed, but I'm not destroyed. Yes. Uh, there is that song that says that there is no mountain he won't tear down. That's right. Oh, coming that's after so me. That's hmm? that's there lovely. is no valley he will not lift wow. up wow. coming after me. Wow. The reckless love of God. That it is utter recklessness for God to work with you and me. Sure. <laughs> you know it is real reckless. Eh? Because we are human, because we make so many mistakes, because we are you, we are, you know, a, a work in progress because we make mistakes. This year I've lost a number of friends because of being a work in progress because they're like, I can't, uh, I cannot associate with the saga. This morning we were having a, a Bible study with friends 
and we were reading the book of Isaiah and I was the one exposing to them Isaiah 41, 42, 43. Mm. And 41, 42 and 43 talk about they are, they are, for the first time in my life, I didn't focus so much on the promises where God says, even though you go through the waters, I will not do this. Even because those, those chapters, those three chapters have that. But I was telling them that for the first time when I read this, my focus was on God. Yeah. It wasn't on what God does. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest areas of focus was that scripture where God says, um, that a broken, a bruised reed, he will not crush. A small yes. daring week, he will yes. not snap out. Yes. And I was telling them that imagine yes. God doesn't snap mm-hmm. out. Like the candle is lit, the, car, the caflen is so little, eh? but he's like, I will not snap it out. I will leave it. I will leave it. Maybe. Maybe, you know? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But human beings will snap you That's out. Right. They will find you limping and they will break you. But, but sometimes uh-huh. I don't condemn them yeah true i mean i was i used to do yeah that's why i'm saying that then god is very reckless because i am a candidate of those who snap out lights i'm a can i'm one of those who uh take out the smoldering wicks i'm one of those who say how can a person do that and yet god will tear down every mountain coming after me. me You know, at least you tear down a mountain going after someone. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but you are tearing down mountains to go to an unfinished, terrible product. That's right. That is totally reckless. That's right. You know? So, um, when you talk about a person who rose and uh, came up, and I, I think about the reckless love of God. Right. Because I know that even as you sit here, you're not a finished product. That's right. But God is not looking at you like That's that. Right. The person who is listening may be like, <laughs> Mm. But God is not, and it's not to say, let us recklessly be bad. That's not what we are saying. Anyhow, so tell us about Patrick. This is the point when I tell us about Patrick and his journey in business. Tell us the story and I'll be listening. Um, I even don't know where to start from. Start from somewhere. (laughs) I am trying, I will try and figure out where Mm. to start from. Mm. Because my ambition of going into business started way back when I was still young. Mm-hmm. I remember at 18, I told myself that uh, by the time I get 25, mm-hmm. I should have finished my degree course. Mm-hmm. I should have built a house. I should mm-hmm. be having a car and I should be having a running business. I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that journey wasn't really Even nice. our cameraman is like, well, that's the guy. Mm-hmm. I, well, it, the journey has not been really easy, mm-hmm. but I've learned so much. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I continue asking God to first leave me so that I can make all the crooked path. Mm. Right. Mm. Mm. Now, um, I remember, I think by around 26, mm. I had a company. Uh, at 26, we were eating chips and chicken. Yeah, I had a company. It was called Excel Sales. We formed this company with a friend. Mm-hmm. And how did we start? We didn't have capital. And so we sat and said, what do you have in your house? Mm-hmm. And uh, I also asked me, what do you have in your house? Mm-hmm. House meaning that one room where we used to, where one used to stay. I, I, at least for him, by then, we were still staying with his parents. Mm. But I was staying on my own in one room apartment. One room, these days when you talk about an apartment, it actually means mm. a, a home. A, 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 a so when you say apartment here, you mean one room is what we are calling an apartment? Those days used to be just one single room. Mm. Maybe where in my world there, mm. it would just be one room. Mm-hmm. The other, uh, the, 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 the washroom and the toilet would be actually out outside. Mm. And in this case, it would be a pit. Now, I have a 26. <laughs> apartment. Mm. <laughs> 26, I started business. Mm. We started together with this guy. Mm-hmm. Asked me, what do you have? I've told you. Mm-hmm. I had my wall clock mm-hmm. and uh, a flat line, Philips. At least you had a Philips. I, I had something, <laughs> at least. Mm-hmm. And then for him, we had, he had, uh, he had uh, a radio, what do you, you used to call them, what? Uh, these, those big radios. I don't know. I have mm, forgotten, actually. I don't know. He had a radio. Because it wasn't a boombox. No, not a radio. So it used to be a complete... Something that produces sound. All right. Mm. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so 
but he was not willing to bring it mm. uh, for a startup. So mm. I told him, no problem, mm. I will bring mine. Mm -hmm. I brought the flat iron mm -hmm. and I brought the, the work. Mm -hmm. We took these items mm -hmm. to Long Street. There's a man who used to sell, he had different uh, products. Mm -hmm. And I was getting them from Dubai by then. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to him because we used to buy from him sometimes. We'd go get some products from him, we go and sell. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you saw those guys who used to come to your office and say, I am my name is so and so, I am com I'm coming from, from the company. And we would chase those ones. Those ones, you actually just one of my boys then, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened is uh, the guy listened. Mm -hmm. So, are you sure? We told him that today we don't have the money, but we want to, to do business. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any collateral bigger than this. So, <laughs> I gave him the wall clock you people. and mm -hmm. the flat iron, and he accepted. And he gave you products. He gave us the merchandise. We went together with my friend, mm -hmm. sold those products, mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. paid the guy. Mm -hmm. After one week, I went and got back your flat my, iron my and products. your cloak my the flat iron and the wall clock and mm. we at that time we had some money and so we started buying from mm. him mm. um i remember very well um we started buying from him from him mm -hmm. and also from other people because we would look for unique products mm -hmm. unique, unique. unique yeah and so we got from him and so got got from other people I remember, I still have those records to date. We would uh, get a profit of 50, between 50,000 and 150, 150,000 Uganda shillings every day. You people, I don't want to attack stupidity here. Let's move on <laughs> very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, after one month, mm -hmm. we had money mm -hmm. to rent out some space. Mm. We went and booked a place in Machi, India. Mm -hmm around Madirisa, mm -hmm. but then things did not go well. Mm -hmm. We got back our money and mm -hmm. found, uh, got money again, mm -hmm. and I rather got that very money and went to Bombay Gardens, that is called Kambala. Mm -hmm. we, we rented out a house, was house number eight, mm -hmm. I remember. We mm -hmm. paid for three months. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we sat as CEOs and we mm -hmm. asked ourselves what next. Mm -hmm. I remember what we did then, mm -hmm. we advertised in New Vision. We wanted people, to, we wanted salesmen. <laughs> and truth be it, people came. There is always someone. People came. We had about 30 salesmen. We would go buy our products mm -hmm. from town, mm -hmm. bring them here, and these guys would move them out. They would go and sell. And our income went a little bit up. Mm. We would give them a percentage mm. of whatever they would sell. Mm. And so I remember we would make a profit of between 200,000 and uh, 500 some days. Then, and so as, the, as business moved on, mm -hmm. we sat and said, now I think now we need to start bringing these products ourselves. So you want to import? I wanted to start importing these mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. And of course, the niche of our business was to get unique products. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we are going out to these customers every day. Mm -hmm. You need to go with something different. Every day, yes. And we had come from a training. Uh, we got in this training from another company. Mm -hmm. There was a guy who came from, I remember, Kenya. Mm -hmm. It was called Bills. He had a company was called what I've, I've been forgotten, but we used to be at uh, Nakasero, up there in Nakasero. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were thoroughly trained. Mm -hmm. The training was based on uh, five and eight principles. Okay? Mm -hmm. And these guys would tell us, you have to go, because every day they would conduct a training for us, the salespeople, to give us courage. Because you're going to sell back a product that you, you sold yesterday. Hmm. Probably to almost the same And maybe even yesterday you sold nothing, ah. but you have to get the courage to go again today. Today. So they had first build your strength, hmm. your emotional strength. Hmm. 
mm. emotional ability for you to mm. be able to go out mm. and talk mm. and talk mm. um, proudly mm. proudly and also boost in your product mm -hmm. and one of those steps i remember we had to maintain the presentation mm. you had to be smart mm. as a person you had to mm. be presentable mm. you had to be smart mm. and secondly you had to maintain the eye contact, eye contact. And also be enthusiastic because enthusiastic enthusiasm is contagious as you smile to the other person they are likely to smile back, back. You. so those are some of the steps i remember we had five and eight and they would they would teach us the same things every, every day. day and i remember this guy mentioning he, he, he said but you people even people the believers they read the same bible throughout their lives hmm. and here we are you have to master the things and that would give us a lot of courage. We would go out there and make sales, and they would promote us. Hmm. Each person would be given a trainer. You would go out with your trainer, see how they are conducting the business, and you would emulate those tactics. Then the following day, after two days, you would go on your own. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. You would go on your own. Hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You would go out on your own and be able to sell. And also you would see other people from the sales they have made, you would see them earning more money. Mm. And you would see how their, their names are mentioned before everyone. Mm -hmm. You would see how they are praised mm. and that actually would encourage you. Mm. And you would say, I, I want to be on that list. And so for us, after like two months, we had already gotten the, the, what? the, 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 the entire, entire idea, idea, the entire concept yes. of the business. And that is how we started our own. Mm. We said, but we sat with the, with a friend and said, can't we do the same thing? Mm. I don't know whether you'd like that kind of employee. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I actually, I, mean, I used to, I, I used not to like them. Yes. But now I don't have a problem because there is enough for all of us in the That's world. That's right. And when you go away, you've not taken me with you. That's right. Uh, and I'm the brainchild of Eunice Kitchen, That's for example. Yes. And it's actually the same thing I tell my staff every day. They tend to get shaken when competitors come near mm -hmm. us. And I always tell them, you know what, guys, it's fine. Mm -hmm. They are not us. Let us just keep doing well what we do or even do it better. Yeah. So I don't have a problem. So if a Eunice Kitchen uh, staff is watching now and they want to go and even call their business something kitchen, it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's enough for all of, us. all of us. Believe you me, even if they formed their kitchen next door, we would all sell. That's right. Yeah. So we started. So that was your first business. That was my first business. Did you learn anything from that? At that time, I was not willing to learn so much. <laughs> this is, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like I the way you are. But when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -mm. But when you look back, yes. what do you learn? And actually, later on, mm. I realized there are things that I needed to know first. Mm. And uh, actually, <laughs> yeah. doing, with, within that journey, mm. let whoever is watching take note of this. Mm. At that time, I was not a believer. Okay. I wasn't a believer. Mm. And so we adopted the methods of the world. Mm. I remember there's a guy who told us, you guys, you want prosperity? Yes, mm. you come. I'm going to take you somewhere. They took you? Hey, they took me. Mm. I left there shut. <laughs> the guy told us, man, mm. maybe we can even avoid going there because it's really mm. not good. Mm. Yeah, we went to a witch doctor and uh, he, he gave us And stuff. yet he's, the business still died. It, it died terribly. It died. It died. What okay. actually... The way this business died, mm. I remember we had gotten some products mm. from some Indian man. Mm. He used to have his shop around Fido Dido. Mm. He, gave, he supplied us with a, a product which looked like a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. Very portable, very mm. small like this. Mm. And uh, we had bought that in big numbers. Mm. We bought a lot of them. Mm. And Kumbi, uh, we did not know they were faulty. That was the end of us. So everyone you sold to told the next person. Told the next person the product is not good, what, mm -hmm. and 
the business collapsed. And yet at that time we had had about a number of uh, salesmen mm. totaling to about 30. And they would actually, the return was really very good. Mm. That's how we collapsed. We had actually the verge of now buying the cars, going to 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 Dubai to bring in those same products. Mm. I think that is in that business, mm. that's why I also bought my first uh, telephone. Mm. Mm. Handset. Mm. People I don't know what, what they call them in mm. their countries, but mm. in Uganda we call mm. them yeah, phones. Cell phone. mm. cell phones, mm. phones like that. By that time we I think we had uh, the service provider was Cell Celtel. Yeah. You were buying. rich to have and, a cell and thing. We're buying, we're buying that one million thing million was dollars. yes. I'm told people were buying one thousand five hundred or so. Yeah. Or one thousand dollars. It was uh, it was it was uh, there was a, a car a scratch card mm -hmm. of ten dollars. Oh, the, you mean the airtime? The airtime. Okay. Air so you were buying airtime yes. dollars. Yes, at that time. Eh, you guy. And You've that, not been and, seen. And, and, and uh, that time there were few people with phones, by the way. Yeah. Few people yeah. in a taxi, and probably you were only one or two people. And if you got a phone call, everybody turned to exactly. look at you. <laughs> because <laughs> they were like, oh, <laughs> and oh my God. You could even probably be described as, well, yeah, well, you know, the other home of the man who has, has a, a phone. phone. Yeah, something like that. Eh, I don't want to stay there. I'm even depressed. So. Uh, take us to the next. So you have moved on with your big head. Mm -hmm. You don't want to learn. You don't care. You've literally picked nothing out of this. True. Although the Bible tells us contrary. And the Bible was not written to believers. So you can't say that because I was a not a believer, mm -hmm. I didn't learn. But let's move on. So for you, you just want to make money. Yeah. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Now, um, from that business, I started moving along. Mm. My friend was uh, a football lover, mm. not just a fan, but he was a football lover because he turned to, out to be a, a referee. Okay. And sometimes he would move a lot. He actually mm. tried to interest me into getting to that level, mm. but my interests were very uh, different, mm. so I never took that route. Mm. And so I started moving on my own. I would go buy stuff and take them to for people in offices mm. or buy fridges, carpets mm. and other products. Mm. And I sell them to people who do not have time to go and uh, and buy mm. and buy them mm. on their own. Mm. Uh, some uh, for men I would even buy them clothes. Shirts and shirts, stuff. Shirts, mm. trousers yes, and stuff. And, stuff mm. and then there's a particular shop where I used to go and buy uh, carpets. Mm -hmm. The owner of that shop became very interested in me. Mm. He saw something never, that probably I never saw in myself. He said, you man, you're a good marketeer. Mm -hmm. That guy had dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. He used to stay uh, in the US. And uh, he would come in Uganda um, occasionally. Mm -hmm. And so in one of those times, I just, be, just after leaving the other business, I found the Lord. Okay. So now we are working with Jesus. Yeah, I found the Lord mm -hmm. through a girl who came and wanted to get her employment for me. She became my girlfriend and introduced me to Christ, hoping that, you know, mm. this guy will get Preach, saved. Preach, convert, and, and, really. and marry. Yeah. So PCM. <laughs> so don't PCM. do it at home. Yeah, preach, convert, and marry. <laughs> you have said it. Don't do it at home. Mm, don't do so it at home. So she actually to introduced me to Christ. Mm. She took me to a total. And uh, when I went to a total, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I would look at the pastor and I was like, are you, you Muzungu, you are here, you are mm -hmm. just actually deceiving us. Mm -hmm. Because... You don't understand African demons. You don't understand mm -hmm. what takes place here. Mm -hmm. Because then I am told, that was before I, I had given my, my life to Christ totally. Mm -hmm. I'm um, told when the word God means go overseas and deceive. So you are here to deceive wow. us. You came from all you, the way. You came overseas to deceive. Yes. Don't try that. Don't try on me. And mm. I'm seeing you. Mm. So, but later, there's a time they asked for uh, the registration of people who want to go and attend a certain conference at Mkumba University. Mm -hmm. I did. And uh, I attended the I attended that conference mm -hmm. through the young workers actually. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I sat close to one gentleman 
who started asking me because of what I was now talking about, mm. he realized that this man would be <laughs> an unbeliever. In our midst. In our midst. He's actually now one of our top pastors. Our top pastors. <laughs> and uh, I told him, are you, are you saved? <laughs> I told him, no, I'm not. So, uh, you will know them by their fruits. Yes, mm. he told me you need Christ. Mm. He successfully preached to me. Mm. And this is really what interested me in the mm. whole conversation. Mm -hmm. He told me, you see me. Mm. I, I am born again. Mm -hmm. Jesus has built me a house. Mm -hmm. Jesus has even given me a car. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. Yes, I, you mean you, Jesus can even give, give those things? Uh, he can even give a car. Uh -huh. He can give I told him. I want I, Jesus. I am, I, <laughs> <laughs> not knowing you may not get the car immediately. Exactly. Mm. And I remember when I got back home, I prayed a, a prayer. I said, <laughs> Jesus, I am told you that you give cars, you give houses. I need the money. Now I've given my life to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Friends with benefits. <laughs> Wow, and Patrick. Because he's very faithful mm. and very generous mm. and very loving. He yeah. came in the night. Okay. That day the night. He came. He came. Mm. And I had not even understood that he uh, <laughs> had <laughs> that to be a man. That way he's to be dead. So I remember he told me. <laughs> he told me. Mm. Patrick, mm -hmm. you must to grow in salvation. Actually, before that, mm. before that statement, mm. I saw him mm. give everything that I asked to mm. my sister who was seated on the left. Mm. Because in that dream, mm. we were seated, the three of us, mm. my sister on the, on the left, mm -hmm. Jesus the other side, mm -hmm. I was here. Mm. And he told me. Mm. He first gave to your sister. He, whatever I asked, mm. the cars, the, <laughs> the houses, house, the everything. everything. Mm. Then he told me, Patrick, you mm. must first grow in salvation. Mm. Then I will give you these, these things. things. Seek first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God and, and his, his righteousness. And then all, all these, these things, things shall, shall be added unto you. Shall be added unto you. Actually, another version says, shall follow you. Mm. Now, for me, I did not understand that statement so much. Mm so that I could really take it so seriously. Mm. But I remember after that dream, I mm. woke up mm. and I heard a clear voice say, mm. for your, answer, your prayers have been answered. Mm. I said, wow, mm -hmm. okay, I will mm. share with other people mm. to actually help me understand Interpret this. that dream, yes. So, um, so you've met the Lord. I, I met the you Lord. You have started that other sailing fridges. Yes. You've met the guy of the dual citizenship. Yes. Who saw something inside you. Exactly. That's where but, we were. Yeah. And mm. I remember I prayed a prayer and said, God, give me an opportunity to work with someone. I need to learn certain things mm. that I've not Now, Katia Magezi uh, Yeah. Uh, I started now being. You, I, you're I, picking I, some I started, bit of wisdom. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it never took long. That guy mm. told me, but you man, I want us to talk. Come up in my office. Mm. I went and he said, now I want to give you a job. Mm -hmm. I want to work with you. Mm. You'll be doing ABCD. Mm. And uh, it never took long. I started working with him. Mm -hmm. That guy also had a restaurant somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, other businesses. He also was importing um, scold bitumen the one that is used in all yeah, construction, construction that, that yes. black stuff. Eh? Mm. So that, and that was one of his biggest businesses. He was importing it from India. And so he gave me work. I started working with him as a salesman. He was actually even importing a byproduct of, uh, of making um, cosmetics. Mm. You understand it? Eh? Mm. Yeah, so um, I was uh, in the beginning, I was selling these other products, the carpets mainly, mm -hmm. and uh, it was moving on well. So again, he took me to the other section of selling these other products. Uh, no, I don't want to call them petroleum products, mm -hmm. although they are like yeah, almost, yes. mm -hmm. And so we started, uh, he told me, together with his general manager at that time, we sat, then it said we can actually, the general manager said, I think we can also start making, processing cosmetics. 
So me and him, we sat, designed, came up with a name, okay. uh, sought out people who, the experts in that field, they came and we started making uh, the cosmetics. The cosmetics. Hey, God is good. Oh, he's really good. <laughs> I remember. It's, it's good that he remains good. <laughs> <laughs> he remains good. Through all life's changing seasons. Exactly. And shake Exactly. So, mm. if God was changing like us, huh? would, uh, I don't he wouldn't be God. Mm. Mm. That's actually what distinguishes him from us. Yeah. For him, he's unchanging. Mm. He remains, he's, mm. he has a constant character. Mm. He has constant everything mm. on him. Mm. I remember when we started, I was the first salesman also to go out from the production to product, from the production line to the marketing field myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I went and I remember that day I sold products worth 20,000 shillings. And somehow it brought joy in the company. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this product will move. Wow. And so we continue. Not despising days of small exactly. business. Exactly. Wow. The next big uh, sales that we made were 90,000. And the guy at that time he had go, he had gone back to the US. He said, hey, I think this will work for us. Mm. I am going to organize, buy you... Um, a van, let's increase on the production. The next week he bought a van. And I started, I sat with the general manager, we started map mapping out the routes. And I told him now I'll have the eastern route, the western route, the uh, southern, the southern, southwestern, yeah, southwestern, like yes. And then also the northwestern north mm. somehow. Mm. And uh, we started started uh, selling the products, mm. the cosmetics. Uh, when I went to the Eastern route, I remember coming back with two million shillings. How, how much? Two million two shillings. Two million shillings. Yes, at that time. Mm. And uh, the, one of the company was inspired. He actually bought a second van, brought in another salesman. And we started competing. Mm -hmm. Yes, the competition was healthy, a mm -hmm. healthy competition. Mm. And um, we would sell, really. Sales were coming. We had our computers were Avis, mm -hmm. Mwana Mujimu. Mm -hmm. Did we have Movit at that time? It, he was he was also starting also. Mm -hmm. He was he was there actually, eh? but uh, not on a big scale. Mm -hmm. I used to call uh, yeah, it was Movit, Movit, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They had also started. Mm -hmm. so the guys would meet in the field out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so sales were coming. We we're doing well. He yeah, actually started he started even constructing a factory. Mm -hmm. He even made orders of bringing in you know, uh, machines from India and other countries. And uh, as we moved on, for us, for me, my work was to bring in the money to a specific, you mm -hmm. know, office. Mm -hmm. And uh, bring the money in that office. Mm -hmm. I don't know what went wrong. Uh, what I learned later was that, you know, the money was misused. And uh, the guy was very, very discouraged with all the investments he had done. He had put in the business. Mm. He was very discouraged. And uh, somehow he said, let me just put that, first put that on the halt. He got me, took me to one of his restaurants on uh, Metropole House, the Derry Road. Mm. Told me, Patrick, I have put you there. Find yourself employment in that mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. I said, what do I do? Of course, I would see guys would make cakes. They would make five cakes and put them on a display. Mm -hmm. Cakes of different uh, shapes. They would put them there. They also had other pastry products. They would put them there. And I was like, now nah, what do I do in this place? My marketing instincts mm. came out very strongly. And I said, I can market these cakes. Mm. I asked the guy, can you please teach me how, how to, to make bake that. cakes? Mm. Or can you do make these cakes on a larger scale? He was not willing mm -hmm. because he hadn't discussed the terms with the management. Mm -hmm. Why you to do that? Mm -hmm. So I would sit and watch him bake cakes. Then I would wait because I would be the last person to leave. Mm -hmm. I would stay behind mm -hmm. and try out. What you just need? Yes, I remember my first uh, trial. The cakes were there; they could not see anything up. Okay. They were just down in there. They were, they, they, they I started with the cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Very humble mm -hmm. and very tiny. Mm -hmm. Very hard. Mm -hmm. Very rigid. Mm -hmm. The 
next day, I tried and it improved. The third day, ah, the cakes had started being the real ones. Wow. <laughs> the fourth day, they came and I had produced about 500 cakes. Mm-hmm. Whose ingredients are these? Uh, I asked how to lay out with the manager. Okay. I made a visit okay. and they, they did. Okay. So, what I did, I asked them to buy for me there's this, there's like a small machine that you can use to seal. Eh? Mm, yes, yes, pack and seal. Yes, pack and seal. Yes. So they gave me that. Mm-hmm. I got those cakes because the cake was there. Mm-hmm. I went out and started marketing the cakes. Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, I would make sales. Mm-hmm. I started making sales. I had a total, a total of 100 supermarkets that I would supply to. I would go to Nkono, I would go to Entebbe, I would go to very many places. And so I also saw other products that were being made there. Mm-hmm. They were being baked uh, in the restaurant. I also learned how to bake them and pack them and sell them. And one of them was sponge roll. Mm. Some call it spring roll. Mm. No, spring rolls are No, there is the, spring it's a cake different. roll, I know it. Yes. The rolls that are ah, just right. eggs and mm. it's soft and you can put icing in the middle, yes. Yeah, actually before that, I had a dream. I had baked a product and it was moving very fast. People really loved it. Mm. And when I sat down and asked myself which product would that be? Mm. At that time, I didn't know how to really interpret, to, mm. you know, ask God and, mm. you know. So... I looked out for that product on a display. Mm. I said it should be this one. That was a sponge roll. Mm. I learned how to bake it and added it onto the cakes. And it was actually moving faster than, than the, cakes. the cakes. So the product, my product range was, it was now, now two, two instead of one. <laughs> instead wow. of one. Wow. And so I went on. Mm. and sold those ones and then uh, one day when I had gone out to sell cakes mm-hmm. I found a meeting uh, I found people in the meeting at my workplace mm-hmm. oh, what I didn't know that my boss had bought a hotel in Kansanga mm. but uh, when I came back from the field I found a meeting and they told me Patrick you're supposed to be part of this meeting mm-hmm. And um, the owner of the business said, by that time he had come back to Uganda, he said, I did not want to go around shopping for someone to manage ABCD. Patrick, from today, you are the manager. Actually, you are the general manager. Mm-hmm. That was just after our wedding. Uh, that's another part. Eh? Mm-hmm. I've just uh, mm-hmm. mentioned it here. Mm-hmm. He gave me, trusted me with the hotel told me from today, your workstation is here in Kansanga. So you're going to manage this hotel. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you moved I, now. I moved to Kansanga and started managing the hotel. That went on for some time. Mm-hmm. But then I sat with him before he went back to the US and I told him, I feel now. I want to start my own business. I have a knack. I told him, please bring God someone. really suffers. Yeah, he mm. does, he does. <laughs> I told him, mm-hmm. bring someone. I show him what to do. I train him. Mm. So that I, with this business, will continue moving well. Mm. And I don't, I don't want you to go to the US. Mm. Then you hear that Patrick abandoned your business. Mm. He's doing his own business. I don't want to be that kind of person. Mm. Because I had told God, I want to be very faithful in Mm. this business. Mm. I want to be very faithful and loyal to this man. Mm. Because when I start mine, Mm. I know I will read the same. Mm. So I tried as much as possible. Thinking that all you needed was to be faithful. That is you what think I faithfulness thought. alone builds exactly mm, the other business. thing I needed to incorporate mm, into the training. Mm. So I tried to be faithful. There are times you would give me salary to pay to the staff, and sometimes to even be with some excess to come with some excess. Mm. I would still return the excess. Mm. So I moved it like that. So when that time came, 
I decided to sit him down, ask him for his time, and told him my plan. Mm. I did not want to just move away. So I told him, he told me, give me three weeks, I'll get back to you. Mm. So he went. Uh, after three weeks, he came back. He told me, Patrick, I've looked around. There's no one I can entrust with my business. They would have been running it. Mm. Then I told him, if we are to continue, let us agree in principle mm. that I will find time to start up the other business without mm. neglecting this one. Mm. Okay. If that is the deal, then number two, I will also request you to leave me stay on my monthly pay. Mm. They would have been giving big pay. Mm. Mm. He also agreed and okay. started, started moving on. Mm. And so for him, he went back to the US. Because mm. that's where his family was. So we started, the business was moving on until after some time, the, the family of my boss sat and said, but how can our brother mm. give his business to another person mm. who is not even part of us? Mm. How? Mm. We, we are going to chase him out of this business. Mm. And the truth to it, they came. I remember I had a dream. Mm. I saw myself living that place. Mm. I saw myself living that, that, that place and I was like, no, this can't be. I have been here for some time and I'm, I, I work faithfully here. Mm -hmm. No one can shake me around. My friend, it took about like two days. To shake you. The guys came and you said, are so easy to shake you out of our business. Our brother's business. And I was like, but have you come to tell him to tell me about that? He's the one who put me here. Now, why are you getting me out of here without his consent. I tried to call him. I don't know what they had told him. I could not get reach out to him. So I decided to move. So when I moved, I started where I had talked from, remember? Wow. Mm. <laughs> from that place where you had not learned, now here you yes. are. Now one of the lessons I learned here was that I had to live with my boss's consent. Mm. I don't just have to Move. Move away. Mm. And also, I had to be faithful. Mm. You get? Mm. I had to be faithful mm. to him and to God in mm. his business. Mm. Yes. Those are some wow. Of the that I had in and then you went to the third one, which might be the one we end with today. Yeah. There have been many, my people. Yeah. We and will be back. Still mm. Yeah, so I started uh, my own business. I started catering business. Mm. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. <laughs> You're just smiling. Mm. Okay. It is okay even mm. if you laugh. Yeah, so I started catering business. Mm. By the way, that week that I was asked to move out of that business, I had some orders. Already? Already. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. So I started from those orders. Because these people, from the way I left that place, mm -hmm. there was no mutual you know, agreement, agreement. whatever. Mm. There was no way I could even do a handover mm. properly, mm. and so that I could even hand over the what the these other orders and mm. everything. We need to learn something there about family businesses and how yeah, they are managed. That's but really that's a story for another day. That's yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I had no any other option apart from going ahead and fulfilling the orders. Mm. So I just I went back home, found a space where I could cook the food from, and supply it. So that's how I was launched into catering business. Mm. I went ahead and opened a company in 2008 called Abundant Harvest. Mm. And so we started from there. Mm. Started getting orders. Mm -hmm. And uh, the harvest was truly abundant. We started actually. Mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. So we started and moved on like that. Mm. But uh, I remember one night, I had been praying to God. I wanted to have a contract. Mm. I wanted to have a form of establishing myself in this business. Although we do supply catering up services on uh, different uh, functions, mm -hmm. introduction functions, and then here in, in Uganda, we call them introduction fractions. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called in other countries. Mm -hmm. And also wedding. Traditional marriage ceremony. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, we would supply food like that. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we moved on that way. A time came and I told God I want to start a restaurant out in town. Uh-huh. And I remember I prayed and fasted mm. for three days. Good boy, good yes. boy, good I believer. God, I want to start my own business. Mm. I am ready. I don't mm. even wash the cups because mm. I told him I am ready. Mm. I wash the cups. Mm. I wash the plates. Mm. Everything was in order. Mm. I told him I am ready now. Mm. So when I went through that session of prayer and fasting, on the third day, the Lord answered us. Mm. I received a phone call, I remember very well, in a mm. dream. Mm. It came through a pod 182, mm. and I could see it was coming from a local church, my church. Mm. And uh, the guy on the other side said, Patrick, you don't have enough money on your account. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, what does that mean? Mm. I tried to check through my financial habits with the Lord, mm. my financial discipline with the Lord. Mm. I asked myself, do I tie? Mm-hmm. And the answer was, no. No, mm. I don't. Mm. Do I give offering? No. Maybe once, once, once in, in a while. Mm. And I was like, I think, God, you are right. Mm. I don't tie. Mm. So really, uh, I don't have in my account. Mm. So to me, that was a lesson. Mm. I started taking God seriously. Mm. You see, you you must understand, the people who is watching us here, mm. you have to understand that prayer alone is not enough. Yeah. Yeah. The package is big. Mm. It involves godly character mm-hmm. and godly discipline, mm. godly financial discipline yes. as well. Mm. So in this case, you cannot substitute tithing for prayer and fasting. Mm. But God, you know, uh, instead mm. of giving you back your tithe, mm. I am I'll, going to I'm fast, going to fast and an extra 40 days. Exactly. Zigate. You understand? <laughs> you actually be going in all winter. Uh, yeah. It'll be like a flat tire. Mm. You, it cannot, that car with mm. a flat tire cannot mm. move far. It, actually, mm. it cannot even go mm. far. Mm. It can't go. It can't even go. Mm. It cannot even move. Mm. You'll be moving forcefully. Mm. So, I said, Ah, I need to be very serious with the Lord. This prayer thing has mm. to be accompanied mm. with the tithe and tithe offering. And with fi- good godly financial discipline. Mm. Not just tithe and offering. Not just offering. praying mm. and believing God, mm. thinking that it is enough. Mm. It is not enough. So I accompanied it with that. Started tithing and you know, giving offering, offering church. Mm. But still, I stayed on the course asking God, I need it. You want a, I need it. You want. It. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but because God is faithful, hey. I remember one night, mm. the Lord comes back. Mm. I got a dream. Mm-hmm. And the guy on the other side, side tells, tells me, My name is Fred. Mm-hmm. I am calling from Ministry of Finance. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. There's a minister of finance in, in heaven. heaven. Mm. He's there. Mm. I know that in heaven there's mm. minister of finance, mm. there's minister of, of health, health minister, minister of wildlife, minister of wives, minister of minerals, resources, exactly. everything. Mm. And the guy tells me, My name is Fred. I'm mm. calling for uh, minister, minister of finance. finance. I have a business for you. Those are the exact words he used. Mm. Sometimes when things are hard, I am tempted to say, hey, But Fred, please come back. <laughs> Please come back. Fred, <laughs> wherever you are, come back. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, as I was still talking to him in the dream, mm. I saw him. He was seated somewhere. Mm. He said, hey, you are even here. You come. Mm-hmm. We sat and he told me, these are the conditions of the business I'm giving you. Mm-hmm. You'll be waking up very early. And sometimes I even fear to say this, but he said it. Mm-hmm. Some days you'll even be working on Sundays. Oh. Mm. Ah. You're shaking some believers' ah. tables. Ah. Is that even spiritual? Ah. That was my question mm-hmm. too. But how can some... God in heaven be telling you to work on in Sunday? Sundays? That is not God. So uh, after that took place, after uh, after one month, I get a call. Mm-hmm. Not from the dream this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kunsi, dream. Like my father would say, here now on earth. Mm-hmm. A lady calls me and says, 
Uh, Patrick, my name is Swan So. I am the HR of the Hospital X. Mm-hmm. Please, uh, I would like to give you business. And uh, she asked me, what time can you come tomorrow? I said, I will come at 10 in the actual sense. If you told me even at 5 a.m. You would have been there. Know. What do you mean? I don't I know that you are there because I don't know what you are, but... <laughs> but I'm not well, sure eh? mm, that things are tight. Mm. So I went the following day. I said, yeah, I'm going to give you a business. This is what touched my heart so much. Mm. The business that I was given mm-hmm. was being run by a believer. She told me, we are going to give you this business. This person, believer has failed. Oh, yes. Jesus. Mm. We are giving you this business. She took me around. Mm-hmm. Please don't show her that you are starting soon. Just go, mm-hmm. uh, look around, then come back and we discuss. I went. Actually, the other thing also that I need to mention here is that the building where, where I found Fred in that room mm-hmm. was a little bit similar to this one. To this one where now they are taking yes, you around. Yes, because even this one was a, a solid building. Mm-hmm. So, um, I went around, then came back, then she told me, um, when are you ready to start? Mm-hmm. I remember that time I had booked to go to a woman show grounds. There's normally a trade show that happens mm. every year in the month of October. Mm. So I asked her to give me that time so that I can I go for the trade show. Then after that, I can report, start yeah. working. Mm. So she actually accepted. And after the trade show, I went. I told her that I'm actually, no, she told me, you wait for my call. Mm. The day she called me, I did not have money. Mm. Start. She told me, I read it, please come and start tomorrow. By I, faith, I Patrick 50, went. I had 50,000 on me. 50,000 Uganda shillings. Give her into how many dollars? Hmm. 50,000 Uganda shillings because about 37 That's will about. be equivalent, uh, 37,000 uh, will be equivalent to 10 <laughs> Something like that. So, so you you had about twenty. Let's okay. Let's make it twenty dollars, Bambi, mm, mm, so that you dollars. have a little money. Then my wife gave me another fifty. Thank God for wives. Yeah, mm. yeah, thank God for wives. Mm. And did I tell you my wife's name? Oh, you didn't tell us your wife's name. Yeah, this is when you say you might forget. Hey, my wife. She's called Monica. So she's a very lovely woman. Mm. She has You've been married for how long? For now about twenty years. Next time we'll be twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty cool years. Twenty cool years. Yes. Hey, and the ring, I Patrick's I you, ring right? fell. Yeah, I told you. I and he needs to replace to the ring. <laughs> he repl- he <laughs> next Hey, day, I'm next, his leader, next church, next and I yeah. shall have it. Yes. We'll see it. Mm. Yeah, so I went out mm. because I had people I knew uh, who uh, who had the product that I wanted to start with. Mm. Like say, uh, okay, there's a man who sells uh, chefing dishes. Okay, mm-hmm. those ones were there. And oh, I was ready with them. Okay, but the, so I needed are we the talking food, food stuffs? Food yes, stuff. yes. Mm. So there's a man who gave me rice. Mm-hmm. There's a man who gave me. Um, uh, beef. Mm-hmm. There's a man who gave me sugar. I mm. got those things on credit. Mm. And so I went to God and told God, you know God, I need these people to pay me on a weekly basis. Mm. Because then I'll be able to raise some money. Mm. And uh, day two, mm-hmm. the owner of the place where I was working, it's a hospital actually, mm-hmm. the owner of the hospital came in. I was with the accountant of the, that uh, hospital. Mm-hmm. She came in and said, told the accountant, but you see, this man, you be paying him on a weekly basis. <laughs> this guy, he just asks and this, even outrageous things God does. And, and uh, really, God has been very faithful. Yeah, he's been. And I remember that um, that week, mm. he paid me 1.2, mm. 40. One million two hundred and forty thousand. That that was big money. Yeah, mm. that was big money. Mm. Then the money I started. I cannot say started with because I started mm. with hundred k. Yes, 100, uh, plus credit worthiness. Yes. yes. Mm. Yeah, and uh, from that time, I did not go back to mm. zero. 
last time. Mm. The zero came later mm. in another part. Mm. Yeah, and we moved on mm. from that one hospital. Mm-hmm. I went to another hospital also, mm-hmm. got a contract with that hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, I opened also another branch, mm-hmm. uh, opened another restaurant mm-hmm. in Chiwuli. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I also opened another restaurant at LDC. So at that time I had four restaurants. So now you were beginning to make money. Oh, yeah, now, so I, 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 and we are out of time sure. while you are making a lot of money. <laughs> wow. I, I, I want to return here on the next episode. I will return. Patrick will most likely not be here. But I have been picking, if you have been looking at me, I have been writing down things mm. that I could pick that are either from scripture or things that are from experience or things that are an interpretation of what you're saying that we can pick out of this story. Mm. Patrick has been sharing his lessons as we go along. But I want you to, as you close, to tell the believers what for you are the most important things you learned out of this. Because, guys, he went to zero. Right. He went to zero. Right now, he doesn't even do restaurants. Mm-hmm. And when we come back with him, we will begin from here and tell the story of the journey. Uh, we'll tell the, the story of the journey up to where he is now and what he's doing. But for today, this is what we were able to tell. But what are the most important things that you learned that you would tell a believer that is doing business? Thank you very much once again. Um, one of the most important things one of the most important things mm. to me mm. Mm. that I have really learned mm. through the years mm. is my relationship with God. Mm. I thought so too. I mean, you, you, we talked about God being reckless, yes. but I don't know if anyone notices that even you, you were reckless in your asking. Very, very it didn't matter if you had been a good child. Yeah. For you, you just exactly. come and you say, I want a car and a house. Yes. I want uh, to be paid yes. on a weekly basis. Yes. Asking no, won't hurt you. Ask. Right. Mm. Yeah. 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 And uh, once you relate well with God, mm. then other things begin to fall into place. Yeah. Because I keep on remembering what he told me mm. that first you go in salvation. Yes. Then I'll give you these things. Yes. Over the years, I have drifted off that promise, mm. and that's how sometimes I've ended up. That's why you sometimes know. you want the other guy to come back. They're afraid. Exactly afraid to come back in the future. <laughs> yeah. So when, when you learn that, number two, mm. uh, prayer alone is not enough. Mm. As a believer, Mm. Yeah, lesson that I will share mm. ahead if she allows. Mm. I, I will allow. There, there are mm. things that I have really learned. Mm. Mm? Mm. One of them is that when you are, when when it is time to work, mm. work you must work as if you are working for. Yeah? Mm. As if as if work as if you didn't pray. Work as if you didn't pray. pray. Mm-hmm. This and yet, when it's separate. time to pray, pray as if as if you, you didn't work exactly. Thank you. You get. Mm. If it means working, if you are employed mm. in someone's business, mm. it is good to, to know when it will pray. Mm. Mm. You, because there are times the person will expect you to deliver. Yeah. Don't tell them that I am praying. Mm. You wait to that place mm. to work. Don't even put in less energy because you because, prayed. Yes. Number mm. two, if you are working for a belief, fellow believer, mm. don't don't be lazy. I don't know why that's the right mm, word. Mm, because mm. you're working for, for a believer, believer, he will understand. Yeah. Sometimes he may interpret your Bible reading as a lesson is because yeah. you are doing it at the wrong time. Yeah, true, true, true. You understand? Mm, mm. Number three or four, something that I'm still struggling with mm. is to have a godly character mm. doing business. Mm. That one, mm. it is something that I really, really want to concentrate on mm. and come out mm. as a victor. Yeah. Because I know in order for us to be able to build the kingdom of God, mm. God is depending on you, God is depending on me. Yeah. Yeah. And without that godly character, we may not be able it's, to it's sinking sand, God yeah. may not be able to trust us with much. Mm. Okay? Mm. Yeah, those are some of the things I can share. Oh, wow. I have my so many lessons with scripture. You know, he says something and then I, you know, like when you talked about uh, the believer whom they took away from, many scriptures came to me, but one of them was <laughs> that those who have 
more will be added yeah. and to those who do not have even the little they have mm -hmm. shall be taken away don't put yourself in a situation where you're that one who has little yes. that it is going to be taken away mm -hmm. but also still in that same i thought about the parable of the uh, the, the, the the talents yes. and the one who buried the talent yes. they when he brought it to the master the master was angry and he picked it and gave it to the other mm -hmm. and some of us as believers that is the kind of life we are living where god mm -hmm. has to replace a believer with a believer. That's you right. get what I mean? Yes, eh? that's right. Um, of course, some people will rejoice thinking so long as it's not an unbeliever. Yeah. But you see, why should you be the one to be replaced? Really? You know, mm. why should you be the one to be replaced? Mm. Of course, I also learned a lot of stewardship, yes. you know, from there. I also mm. learned a lot about the fact that you are being watched. Mm. And I also learned that you should never just do things without uh, thinking about the fact that you are not indispensable. Yeah. You know, some Sometimes we think I prayed for this and yes. God gave yes. me and you know God also is going to replace you that's right you know mm. and I you know that one thing you can imagine from that one thing I got all those angles mm. of the believer being replaced mm. we should do our work in such a way that we are irreplaceable and in this case I'm not even just talking about you serving in an organization mm. I'm also not talking about you as a business person, mm. like to be replaced by another business person. Mm. But I think even I have I have picked from there and it's something I'm going to go with, even the customer. Mm. Because part of my story in catering, where I failed in catering, is that I gave my customers the opportunity to replace me. Mm. You know, you have to serve in such a way that even your customer yeah. doesn't want to replace That's you. Right. But I gave my customers the opportunity to replace me mm. because I didn't do well so for their next event yes. they looked for another person amen one one last uh, one one more mm. one more thing that i can say mm. you see the scripture in the book of jeremiah i think mm. chapter 8 and verse 4 mm. says that if a man falls down mm. won't he rise up again mm. Mm. if mm. you're there mm. and the, the business is no more mm. at this time yes. or your business collapsed mm. or you went back to zero mm. there is still hope yeah and you're listening to these things and maybe you're like, well, yes. I did all that. Yes. Well, I did yes. all that. There's maybe I don't deserve. Yeah, yeah. there's don't hope. Don't lose, don't yeah. lose that hope. Yeah. Go back to the Father. Mm. The Father knows why he created you. Exactly. And he knows exactly what kind of business you're supposed to be uh, doing right now. Even with all your rough edges. Exactly. He is willing. He will still embrace you. He will still calm you. Mm. Just be willing. But if you come back with the same stupidity as the last time, he's yeah. not going to take it. Exactly. We have seen Patrick take one yes. left with stupidity, <laughs> take two left with stupidity, take oh, three. Le I don't know who are you. True. What's your problem? True. You know. So if you you're going to keep on taking the takes mm. and takes and takes and yes. test takes until you're refined. That's right. My business friend, I hope this episode was a good story for you to laugh, a good story of encouragement. I'm going to come back in the next episode to teach you some of the things that I picked out of this. But even before I teach you that, I want you to share with us, what are you learning? Yeah, because there are many things that you're learning and I know that there are angles that you have picked that even I have not picked that's because right. each one of us, God has given us our measure of faith that's and right. each one of us has been picking based on our measure of faith. That's you know, I was telling you, Patrick, that I realized recently that when the Bible says deep goes unto deep, yes. it means that we pick based on our levels of depth. That's right. That is how deep goes unto deep. That's right. So if you go to a place where the man of God is deep, you had better be as deep in order for you to pick the depth. So even in this conversation, each one of us was picking based on our levels That's of depth. Right. So there is someone who probably just laughed and that was the level of depth. That's right. Then there is someone who just said, how could you do that? That's their level of depth. It's a, le it's a level of, you know, finding fault and whatever. But there is someone who picked and said, eh, you know, someone did that and they have picked because deep goes unto deep. So I pray that each one of us will be able to share Please write on this, on the thread. I know many of you like to inbox me. I don't know why you're ashamed to be seen that you're my friends, but dear. Like, people don't want to share on the thread. They come, by the way, they share with me, but they come to my inbox. Oh, that was nice. Oh, you've encouraged me. Oh, yeah. But you know, it is good if you actually put the comment here on the thread, because when you put the comment on the video, then there is a way in which the algorithm will now show it even to your friends and, you know, loved ones and whatever. And that is just how we take this message across. 
Otherwise, until we come back next time, Patrick has given you his parting shots. He's going to be back here. We are going to have many more here to share one with another. Iron sharpening iron because that is how we become better. I'm still with my friends at Kesha Film House. I am uh, still with my friend of CC Faces and Uni's Kitchen is still uh, bringing this message across to us because Uni's Kitchen pays for us to be able to be on this podcast. Guys, I don't do this free. I don't have a sponsor. I don't have someone who says, oh, here is the money. But I want to thank Uni's Kitchen for bringing us this message and what is my encouragement once in a while when you can when you pass by kasangati when you pass by Kwege, when you pass by mukono when you have a wedding when you have an introduction you can't probably give us the money to bring this content but if you have been blessed even in the smallest of ways just go and buy a cookie at uni's kitchen go and buy a cake at uni's kitchen give us your introduction you know and in that way you will actually be sponsoring this podcast thank you every very much everybody for watching and together with patrick we want to say bye, bye.